Well, good morning. This is uh, Ian R. Crane here, and uh, as you can see uh, here in the southwest of England, it's a, a beautiful morning. But um, unfortunately, the sunrise is somewhat spoiled by the massive amounts of sky fracking that's been going on. And he's still going on. Look at this. You know, don't tell me this is natural. And uh, if nothing else, this is uh, a massive form of pollution that uh, everybody seems to want to ignore. It actually seems far easier to get people to acknowledge the damage of um, what's going to potentially happen uh, some anything between five and 10,000 feet beneath their, their feet, but uh, not to look up and see what's occurring here in the skies. But, uh, you know, that's for another time. This morning, let's get the... Uh, camera back on the subject matter here there we go it's very crisp and uh, frosty morning but very pleasant apart from the sky fracking which probably means that we're going to get some rain or some snow there's an interesting one there's a black sky frack up there as opposed to the uh, usual white however however call me a conspiracy theorist oh well david rose already has by the way, David, um, uh, I'm sure that you're probably on the cusp of writing an article uh, about all of the transgressions uh, associated with the people who work in the oil and gas industry. Seeing as you took great delight in identifying about half a dozen people who have some unfortunate history um, in the anti-fracking community, I can assure you that there is one hell of a lot more who are actually on the payroll of the oil and gas industry. And... Um, uh, we may well be taking a look at uh, some of those unfortunate individuals uh, a little uh, later in the week. But here we are, it's uh, Tuesday, the 19th of December. And uh, so this is literally one day shy of the six week marker since uh, Third Energy uh, submitted their application to uh, Greg Clark, Secretary of State for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy for permission to frack at Kirby Misperton. And the kit is still sitting there. Uh, pumps are circulating the water to stop it freezing. But uh, basically the kit is sitting there waiting for Greg Clark to sign it off. Or not, as the case may well be, one hopes. Well, uh, today actually I'm going to look at um, somebody else in the uh, UK oil and gas industry that uh, really is a massive fail. And that's Ken Cronin of UCOOG. And Ken Cronin has been the uh, uh, chief of uh, UCOOG basically since it was set up um, some, what is it now, nearly five years ago, um, to promote the UK onshore oil and gas industry. And basically, Ken, you have failed dramatically. And um, uh, of course, your background is PR. You actually know very little uh, about the mechanics of the oil and gas industry other than what you've learned in your uh, role as uh, PR. And uh, prior to joining uh, UCU, you had 10 years with Creeb Gavin Anderson. And it seems that you were part of uh, quite a significant staff walkout uh, back in 2013, but then you had something else to go to, one assumes, to head up UCU. And uh, you'd been the UK managing partner there, so you're obviously in uh, quite a senior position. Um, but obviously you, uh, things weren't going your way and you spat your proverbial dummy out and left and came to join UCOOG. And I just want to read you UCOOG's charter. It says, in June 2013, UCOOG launched its Shale Community Management Charter, which outlines the steps that the industry will take to mitigate concerns surrounding safety, noise, dust, truck movements and other environmental issues. The industry recognises that it is critical that it has an open and honest dialogue with the public about what potential for shale gas in the UK means for communities. Now let me just uh, reiterate um, that uh, final paragraph there. The industry recognises that it is critical that it has an open and honest dialogue with the public about what potential for shale gas in the UK means for communities well all i can say to that is ha, what open and honest dialogue ken cronin yukug 
and the uh, onshore oil and gas industry wouldn't know open and honest if it came up and slapped them in the face. There is absolutely nothing that is open and honest about this particular industry. By the way, it does look as though YouTube and Facebook are doing everything they possibly can to um, limit the uh, distribution of, uh, of these videos because uh, apparently I have an extremely strong connection and yet YouTube says it's trying to reconnect. So we may have to uh, uh, download from Facebook and uh, re-upload. But anyway, Ken Cronin, open and honest. Well, first of all, there is no possibility of you going into communities and attempting to articulate your open and honest version of what unconventional oil and gas brings to those communities. You will talk purely in palliatives. And, uh, and of course, you will concentrate on the 10 million that uh, will potentially come out of the government's wealth fund to uh, try and um, effectively bribe communities into allowing this industry to uh, rock up on their doorstep. And you know fine well, of course, that that 10 million is just a fantasy because all of the companies are structured so that they will not make any kind of profit whatsoever. And of course, Theresa May has stated that it will come from profits where there won't be any. So there won't be a wealth fund. But, you know, you don't give up. And uh, just yesterday, um, one of uh, the people who does watch these live streams, at least at least one, um, and they sent me an article that appeared in the National Librarians magazine. And let me just um, uh, read to you what that said. The article was headed, Fracking Fluid Could Support Librarians. Now, I'm sure that you are very aware that libraries are being shut down right across the country. And those that aren't being shut down are having their services curtailed dramatically. In fact, um, in many cases, the libraries are only kept open by volunteer staff. And even large libraries, and there's one in the north of England where, you know, for some time I was using their uh, ground floor um, research room as a, a sort of office where I could get a bit of peace and quiet. And uh, then earlier this year I discovered that that has been shut down due to lack of staff resources. So uh, librarians, you know, easy target. And in the article it says the National Wealth Fund could generate up to 10 million for each local community to spend on local projects, including play parks, sports facilities and libraries. Well, you know, how deceptive could you possibly get? Obviously, you know, we know that UCOOG, which is a PR agency funded by the UK onshore oil and gas industry, will literally stoop to anything to try and get people to not just buy into it, but just stop their opposition. And uh, this is a bit like the uh, nuclear industry, the nuclear waste industry, trying to bribe communities with £40 million to uh, con be considered as the location for the uh, repository for the deep geological disposal of nuclear waste, which, of course, we've uh, discussed elsewhere. So Ken Cronin... You know, here's the challenge. You, or really anybody else in the industry, is most unlikely, increasingly unlikely, to accept any invitation to debate with well-informed uh, communities. In fact, um, you know, we, we've seen Tom Pickering recently totally spanked in a public debate in Eckington. But, you know, Tom Pickering's arrogance knows no bounds. I mean, he sat there basically through the evening really looking like he didn't give a toss. And we know Ineos doesn't give a toss. In fact, uh, I've seen a, an excellent uh, graphic that is their new logo, Ineo, Ineos, don't give a toss. And uh, you know, maybe we'll put a link to that under this uh, video. But uh, Tom Pickering just sat there through the evening just going through the motions because he knows basically they've lost the argument with communities. And so they are now totally reliant on the British government, yeah, the British government, pushing it through in England. Because in Scotland, his home country, the uh, Scottish Parliament have effectively put a block on any unconventional gas exploitation north of the border. Same in Wales, same in Northern Ireland, same in the Republic of Ireland. But uh, here in England, British government, of course, wants to sacrifice the north of England to this insidious industry. So please, 
the beauty is that there are now literally hundreds of people around the country who are not only extremely well informed but are also more than capable of articulating the all the reasons why it is that this industry should not be established in England and certainly not in a blanket right across the uh, the whole of the north of England creating a massive sacrifice zone and uh, you know obviously the uh, industry is uh, learning and uh, it's increasingly unlikely to participate in any local debate other than than as a box ticking exercise to say that well you know we had the communication and uh, oh, everything's okay everything's fine of course uh, the only people who believe that will be the ones that weren't actually anywhere near the uh, the presentation so you coog absolutely no faith in this pr agency whatsoever and in fact ken cronin's response to the uh, report which even the daily mail uh, acknowledged at least online from edinburgh university making the observation that the volume of frack waste in this country could be it will be a massive problem it's a massive problem in the us it's a massive problem in australia and it will be a massive problem here and all cronin can do is trot out the palliatives that well you know there are a few uh, facilities in the uk that are approved for the disposal of waste what he doesn't make the observation is that first of all they haven't been tried and tested and neither do they have the capacity to be able to handle the likely volumes if this industry does uh, achieve what Cronin and his cronies uh, think that or hope that it will. So, as I always say, do your own research. Take a look at uh, you know, the statements put out by UCOOG and you will see that they are nothing more than an industry paid uh, PR agency. No depth to anything that they put out. It is simply PR palliatives for the gullible. And the beauty is that the number of gullible people around the country is reducing exponentially. Because once they look, we know that there's no going back. So, tomorrow is the one year anniversary of the um, courts, Justice Lang, uh, ruling against Rydale. Uh, and uh, effectively rejecting their judicial review against the North Yorkshire County Council decision to permit uh, Third Energy to frack at Kirby Misperton. Of course, this is Third Barclays Bank trading as uh, Third Energy. So that decision was made at roughly about 10 o'clock in the morning on December the 20th, 2016. Tomorrow, December 20th, 2017, three o'clock in the afternoon will be exactly one year since we took the field at Kirby Misperton and a couple of months later uh, reached a an arrangement of sorts uh, with the the land owner and of course part of that arrangement is the commitment to return the field in at least the condition in which we found it at, what, at whichever point it is that uh, we leave which won't be any time soon unless the British government announces that it is going to follow the lead of Scotland, Wales, Ireland and the Republic of Ireland and outlaw this uh, insidious abomination. So that one year anniversary, if you are anywhere near um, Kirby Mesperton or even if you're within you know, reasonable travelling distance, please go along and uh, spend some time with the people on the camps there because there are two camps, there's the main camp and then there is the gate camp. And uh, go along and meet these people and what you will find is a phenomenal level of uh, knowledge and awareness about this industry in fact i can pretty much guarantee that amongst the people on the camps you will find more honest and open discussion than you will when you encounter the likes of ineos third energy yuku igas quadrilla or anybody else that actually has some financial interest in the in the game um i gather also i'm told that uh, the uh, buddhist monks who have been doing a tour of the uh, frac sites in the UK will also be at uh, Kirby Mispleton tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, hey, we'll take all the help we can get. And, uh, you know, con please concentrate from time to time and visualize Greg Clark actually rejecting that application. That uh, will be 
are sending a massive message, not just to Barclays Bank, to Third Energy, but to the industry, that uh, the British government may well actually have a policy to support this industry, but it is not going to have the piss taken out of it uh, by cowboy companies um, thinking that they can ram a site so full of frack kit that it effectively creates one of the most unsafe work environments that this country has ever seen. It's a disaster absolutely waiting to happen. We know it, and I believe that Greg Clark increasingly knows it. And, uh, you know, say the word from Westminster is that Theresa May may well have put Greg Clark into this position to effectively, effectively neuter a potential rival for the leadership of Number 10. Uh, as we know, uh, politics is perhaps one of the most Machiavellian arenas uh, uh, on the planet in any way, shape or form. So who knows? But here we are, you know, less than a week now uh, before uh, Christmas. So, you know, unless uh, Greg Clark has a really perverse Kafkaesque sense of humour, then it's unlikely that he's going to uh, sanction uh, Barclays Bank's application to frack at Kirby Misperton this side of the new year. Meanwhile, of course, that gives us an opportunity to submit freedom of information requests. And I would encourage uh, as many people to do this as feel up to it. You go to whatdotheyknow.com, whatdotheyknow.com, and uh, it's a very easy process to follow. Well, I guess like everything, it's easy when you know how, but uh, give it a whirl. Um, submit your freedom of information request to Greg Clark and ask for all correspondence between the uh, Department of Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, uh, UCOOG, Third Energy, Barclays Bank and uh, any other uh, player in uh, the uh, arena who is seeking to get permission to start fracking at Kirby Misperton. Let's have a look at why it is that Greg Clark has felt it appropriate to delay making that decision for six weeks and potentially much longer. I'm sure that's going to make for very, very interesting reading. So that's it for now. Um, join me again tomorrow. Thank you for the, uh, the people who are joining me each morning. Uh, I hope it makes a change from what, what else you're watching on uh, the journey into work um, or uh, while you're having your morning coffee. But uh, join me tomorrow for the annual, or the anniversary, I should say, of the Kirby Misperton Protection Camp. And uh, let's have another look at what's occurring or not occurring within this insidious industry. Meanwhile, um, I'm guessing the temperature is uh, the wrong side of freezing, but it is a beautiful morning apart from the sky fracking. And, uh, you know, once, um, once we nail this issue, then maybe we have to start actually making people look up and uh, start taking notice of uh, what's occurring because um, this ain't natural you know when I was a kid the skies never looked like this you can argue that uh, air traffic has increased dramatically but um, you know when I'm in other parts of the world and I was in the southern hemisphere recently you know I got back used to seeing clear blue skies nothing like we see here in northern Europe and I know people are seeing in North America as well and anybody, anybody who still believes that their government has their best interests at heart, then please, it's really time to start paying some attention. Okay, that's it. Catch you tomorrow. Take care.